Chapter Two, Part Two of Commentary on the Gospel of John, Book Four by Cyril of Alexandria, translated by Reverend Philip Edward Pusey. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Fifty-two, fifty-three. The Jews, therefore, were striving among themselves, saying, "How can this man give us his flesh to eat?" Jesus therefore said unto them all things are plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge as it is written but darksome to the foolish is even that which is exceeding easy for the truly wise hearer shuts up the more obvious teaching in the treasury of his understanding not admitting any delay in respect of this but as to the things the meaning whereof is hard he goes about with his inquiries and does not cease asking about them and he seems to me profitably to press on to do much the same as they say that the fleetest dogs of the chase do who having from nature great quickness of scent keep running round the haunts of their game and does not the wise and prophetic oracle call to some similar habit seeking seek and dwell with me for the seeker must seek that is must bring a most unflinching zeal thereto and not go astray after empty speculations but in proportion as anything is more rugged in its difficulty with so much the more vigorous mind must he apply himself and carry by storm with more resolute onset of his thoughts that which is concealed but the unpractised and unteachable mind whatever starts up before it rages at it with its unbelief rejects the word conquering as spurious from undisciplined daring mounting up to the last degree of arrogance for that which will give way to none nor think that aught is greater than it how will it not at last be what we have just said and we shall find by looking into the nature of the thing that the jews too fell into this disorder for when they ought to have accepted unhesitatingly the words of the saviour having already through many things marvelled at his god-befitting power and his incontestable authority over all and to have inquired what was hard of attainment and to have besought instruction wherein they were perplexed they senseless repeat how to god as though they knew not that it is a word replete with all blasphemy for the power of accomplishing all things without toil belongs to god but they being natural men as the blessed paul saith received not the things of the spirit of god but the so dread mystery seems folly to them we then ought to derive benefit herefrom and re-establishing our own life by others falls to hold without question our faith in the teaching of the divine mysteries and not to apply how to aught that is told us for it is a jewish word and therefore deserving of extremest punishment and when the ruler of the synagogue of the jews nicodemus by name on hearing the divine words said how can these things be with justice was he ridiculed hearing art thou a master of israel and knowest not these things let us then found more skilful in the search after what is profitable even by others folly beware of saying how to what god works but rather study to attribute to him the knowledge of the mode of his own works for as no one will know what god is by nature but he is justified who believeth that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him so again will one be ignorant of the mode of his several acts but by committing the issue to faith and by confessing the almighty power of god who is over all will he receive the not contemptible reward of so good a decision for the lord of all himself willing us so to be affected saith by the prophet isaiah for my counsels are not as your counsels neither as your ways are my ways saith the lord but as the heaven is far from the earth 
so are my ways far from your ways and your thoughts from my mind but he that so greatly surpasses us in wisdom and might how shall he not also work wonderfully and overpass our understanding i would fain introduce yet an argument besides no mean one as i think for they who in this life take up the knowledge of mechanics as it is called often engage to perform some great thing and the way of doing it is hidden from the mind of hearers till they have seen it done but they looking at the skill that is in them even before the trial itself accept it on faith not venturing to gainsay how then may one say will not they with reason be open to heavy charges for daring to dishonour with their unbelief god the chiefest worker of all things who refuse not to say how to those things which he worketh albeit they acknowledge him to be the giver of all wisdom and are taught by the whole divine scripture that he can do all things but if thou persistest o jew saying how i too will imitate for thy sake thine ignorance and say to thee how earnest thou out of egypt how tell me was the rod of moses changed into a serpent how became the hand leprous and was again restored as it is written how passed the water into the nature of blood how passed thou through the red sea as through dry land how by means of a tree was the bitter water of mara changed into sweet how too was water supplied to thee from the breast of the rocks how was the manna brought down to thee how again stood the jordan in his place or how through a shout alone was the impregnable wall of jericho shattered and will that how never fail thee for thou wilt be detected already amazed at many mighty works to which if thou appliest the how thou wilt wholly disbelieve all divine scripture and wilt overthrow all the words of the holy prophets and above all the holy writings of thine own moses himself it were therefore meter far that believing in christ and assenting unhesitatingly to his words ye should be zealous to learn the mode of the blessing and not be inconsiderately intoxicate saying how can this man give us his flesh to eat for the word this man too they say in disdain for some such meaning again does their arrogant speech hint at fifty three verily verily i say unto you except ye eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood ye have not life in you long-suffering truly and of great mercy is christ as one may see from the words now before us for in no wise reproaching the littleness of soul of the unbelievers he again richly gives them the life-giving knowledge of the mystery and having overcome as god the arrogance of them that grieve him he tells them those things whereby they shall he says mount up to endless life and how he will give them his flesh to eat he tells them not as yet for he knew that they were in darkness and could never avail to understand the ineffable but how great good will result from the eating he shows to their profit that haply inciting them to a desire of living in greater preparation for unfading pleasures he may teach them faith for to them that have now believed there follows suitably the power too of learning for so saith the prophet isaiah if ye will not believe neither yet shall ye understand it was therefore right that faith having been first rooted in them there should next be brought in understanding of those things whereof they are ignorant and that the investigation should not precede faith for this cause i suppose did the lord with reason refrain from telling them how he would give them his flesh to eat and calls them to the duty of believing before seeking 
for to them that had at length believed he brake bread and gave to them saying take eat this is my body likewise handing round the cup to them all he saith drink of it all of you for this is my blood of the new testament which is being shed for many for the remission of sins seest thou how to those who were yet senseless and thrust from them faith without investigation he explaineth not the mode of the mystery but to those who had now believed he is found to declare it most clearly let them then who of their folly have not yet admitted the faith in christ hear except ye eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood ye have no life in you for wholly destitute of all share and taste of that life which is in sanctification and bliss do they abide who do not through the mystical blessing receive jesus for he is life by nature inasmuch as he was begotten of a living father no less quickening is his holy body also being in a manner gathered and ineffably united with the all-quickening word wherefore it is accounted his and is conceived of as one with him for since the incarnation it is inseparable except as regards the knowledge that the word which came from god the father and the temple from the virgin are not indeed the same in nature for the body is not consubstantial with the word from god yet are they one by that coming together and ineffable concurrence and since the flesh of the saviour hath become life-giving as being united to that which is by nature life the word from god when we taste it then we have life in ourselves we too united to it as it to the indwelling word for this cause also when he raised the dead the saviour is found to have operated not by word only or god befitting commands but he laid a stress on employing his holy flesh as a sort of co-operator unto this that he might show that it had the power to give life and was already made one with him for it was in truth his own body and not another's and verily when he was raising the little daughter of the chief of the synagogue saying maid arise he laid hold of her hand as it is written giving life as god by his all-powerful command and again giving life through the touch of his holy flesh he shows that there was one kindred operation through both yea and when he went into the city called nain and one was being carried out dead the only son of his mother again he touched the bier saying young man to thee i say arise and not only to his word gives he power to give life to the dead but that he might show that his own body was life-giving as i have said already he touches the dead thereby also infusing life into those already decayed and if by the touch alone of his holy flesh he giveth life to that which is decayed how shall we not profit yet more richly by the life-giving blessing when we also taste it for it will surely transform into its own good that is to say immortality those who partake of it and wonder not hereat nor ask thyself in jewish manner how but rather consider that water is cold by nature but when it is poured into a kettle and brought to the fire then it all but forgets its own nature and goes away unto the operation of that which has mastered it we too then in the same way even though we be corruptible through the nature of our flesh yet forsaking our own infirmity by the immingling of life are transelemented to its property that is life for it needed 
it needed that not only should the soul be recreated through the holy ghost into newness of life but also that this gross and earthly body should by the grosser and kindred participation be sanctified and called to incorruption but let not the jew sluggish of understanding ever suppose that a mode of some new mysteries has been discovered by us for he will see it in the older books i mean those of moses already foreshadowed out and bearing the force of the truth for that it was accomplished in outward forms too for what tell me shamed the destroyer what provided that their forefathers also should not perish along with the egyptians when death the conqueror of all was arming himself against the first-born is it not manifest to all that when they in obedience to the divine law sacrificed the lamb and having tasted of its flesh anointed the doorpost with the blood death was compelled to pass them by as sanctified for the destroyer that is the death of the body was arrayed against the whole nature of man by reason of the transgression of the first formed man for then first did we hear dust thou art and unto dust shalt thou return but since christ was about to overthrow the so dire tyrant by existing in us as life through his holy flesh the mystery was fortified to them of old and they tasted of the flesh of the lamb and were sanctified and preserved by its blood he that was appointed to destroy passing by by the appointment of god those who were partakers of the lamb why then art thou angry o jew at being now called from the types to the truth when christ says except ye eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood ye have not life in you albeit thou oughtest to come with more confidence to the comprehending of the mystery pre-instructed by the books of moses and by most ancient figures led most undoubtingly to the duty of faith fifty four whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life and i will raise him up at the last day herein too ought we specially to admire the holy evangelist openly crying and the word was made flesh for he shrank not from saying not that he was made in flesh but that he was made flesh that he might show the union and we do not say either that god the word of the father was transformed into the nature of the flesh or that the flesh passed into the word for each remaineth that which it is by nature and one christ of both but in a manner unspeakable and passing human understanding the word united to his own flesh and having as it were transformed it all into himself according to the operation which lieth in his power of quickening things lacking life drave forth of our nature the corruption and dislodged too death which of old prevailed by means of sin he therefore that eateth the holy flesh of christ hath eternal life for the flesh hath in itself the word which is by nature life wherefore he saith i will raise him up at the last day instead of saying my body shall raise him up that is to say him that eateth it he hath put i not as though he were other than his own flesh and not wholly so by nature for after the union he cannot at all be severed into a pair of sons i therefore he saith who am become in him through mine own flesh that is will raise up him who eateth thereof in the last day for it were indeed even impossible that he which is by nature life should not surely overcome decay and master death 
wherefore even though death which by the transgression sprang on us compelled the human body to the debt of decay yet since christ is in us through his own flesh we shall surely rise for it were incredible yea rather impossible that life should not make alive those in whom it is for as if one took a spark and buried it amid much stubble in order that the seed of fire preserved might lay hold on it so in us too our lord jesus christ hideth life through his own flesh and inserts it as a seed of immortality abolishing the whole corruption that is in us fifty five for my flesh is true meat and my blood true drink again does he contrast the mystic blessing with the supply of manna and the savour of the cup with the founts from rocky beds and what he said afore in other words this he again says here manifoldly fashioning the same discourse for he does not advise them to marvel overmuch at the manna but rather to receive him as bread from heaven and the giver of eternal life for your fathers he says ate the manna in the wilderness and died this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die for the food of manna says he having for a very little time sported with the need of the body and driven away the hurt of want was again powerless and did not engraft eternal life in them that had eaten thereof that then was not the true food and bread from heaven that is but the holy body of christ which nourishes to immortality and life everlasting is verily the true food yea and they drank water also from the rock and what then he says or what the profit to them who drank for they have died that too then was not true drink but true drink in truth is found to be the precious blood of christ which uproots from the foundation all corruption and dislodges death which dwelt in the flesh of man for it is not the blood of any chance man but of the very life that is by nature wherefore we are entitled both the body and the members of christ as receiving through the blessing the son himself in ourselves fifty six he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and i in him manifoldly does christ initiate us by these words and since his discourse is hard of attainment by the more unlearned asking for itself rather the understanding of faith than investigation he revolving again and again over the same ground makes it easy in divers ways and from all parts illumines what is useful therein fixing as a kind of foundation and groundwork the most excellent desire for it for he that eateth my flesh saith he and drinketh my blood abideth in me and i in him for as if one should join wax with other wax he will surely see i suppose the one in the other in like manner i deem he who receiveth the flesh of our saviour christ and drinketh his precious blood as he saith is found one with him commingled as it were and immingled with him through the participation so that he is found in christ christ again in him thus was christ teaching us in the gospel too according to matthew saying the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened who then the woman is what the three measures of meal or what the measure at all shall be spoken of in its proper place for the present we will speak only of the leaven as then paul saith that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump so the least portion of the blessing blendeth our whole body with itself 
and filleth it with its own mighty working. And so Christ cometh to be in us, and we again in him. For one may truly say that the leaven is in the whole lump, and the lump, by like reasoning, is in the whole leaven. You have in brief the sense of the words. And if we long for eternal life, if we pray to have the giver of immortality in ourselves, let us not, like some of the more heedless, refuse to be blessed, nor let the devil deep in wickedness lay for us a trap and snare, a perilous reverence. Yea, says he, for it is written, He that eateth of the bread, and drinketh of the cup unworthily, eateth and drinketh doom unto himself. And I, having examined myself, see that I am not worthy. When, then, wilt thou be worthy? Will he who thus speaks hear from us? When wilt thou present thyself to Christ? For if thou art always going to be scared away by thy stumblings, thou wilt never cease from stumbling. For who can understand his errors, as saith the holy psalmist? And wilt be found holy without participation of that holy preserving sanctification. Decide then to lead a holier life, in harmony with the law, and so receive the blessing believing that it hath power to expel not death only, but the diseases in us. For Christ thus coming to be in us lulleth the law which rageth in the members of the flesh, and kindleth piety to Godward, and deadeneth our passions, not imputing to us the transgressions in which we are, but rather healing us, as sick. For he bindeth up that which was crushed, he raiseth what had fallen, as a good shepherd, and one that hath laid down his life for his sheep. End of chapter 2